Hey, welcome back to another example where we're going to go over solving an integral using integration by parts the fast way. So if you have an integral and you determine that you can split it into two different parts where one part would have successive derivations that tend to zero and the other part is easy to integrate, then you can apply integration by parts the fast way and solve it super fast. So in this case, we're going to split this into two parts. Let's look at this x to the power of 4 and then cos of x dx. Now, successive derivations of x to the 4 would tend to 0, and cos of x dx is easy to integrate. So this meets our requirements for using integration by parts the fast way. So all we have to do now is just draw each part down here. So we'll have um, x to the 4 on one side, and we'll just write cos of x dx on the other side. So let's just go and derive x to the 4 successively until we get 0. So the derivative of x to the 4 is just 4x to the power of 3. The derivative of 4x to the power of 3 is just 12x squared. The derivative of 12x squared is just 24x. And the derivative of this is 24. And the derivative of 24 with respect to x is 0. Now we're just going to take successive integrals of this part as well for the same number of times that we derived the, the other part. And the integral of cos x dx is just equal to sine of x. Um, I'm going to drop the arbitrary constant for now. As long as I remember to put it back in later in the problem, it's generally okay. But otherwise we just get a whole bunch of plus c's all over the place and they just kind of amalgamate later into one. So you can kind of just ignore it for now. Um, if you're careful to remember to put it in later. So the integral of sine of x is just equal to negative cos of x. The integral of negative cos of x would be negative sine of x. The integral of negative sine of x would be positive cos of x. And then we're just going to keep completing the cycle again. So the integral of cos of x would be positive sine of x. If you don't remember how to take the integrals of sine and cos of x, there is an integral table linked in the description of this video. So the next step is to just draw diagonal lines going from top right to bottom left and alternate the signs on each of them. And the solution of our integral is just going to be equal to the sum of products along our diagonals, taking care to apply the correct positive or negative sign to each term. So let's actually write those out. We'll do the first line in detail. So we're going to have x to the 4 times sine of x. That's the first product along a diagonal is x to the 4 times sine of x, and we assign this term here a positive sign because of this positive sign. The next one we're going to assign a negative for the summation, but the product is actually going to be a negative value in itself because it'll be negative cos of x times 4, so this negative and this negative will kind of cancel out back to be a positive down here. So we'll have plus 4x to the power of 3 times cos of x, and then for the next term here we have plus uh, but there's also going to be a negative in here that will be factored into that. So we're going to add uh, you know, a negative number times a positive number, so we're actually going to add a negative number. So that will be minus 12x squared times sine of x. And then for the next term, it's just a straight negative here, so we're just going to have uh, 24x times cos of x. And then the last one is just a positive, so it'll be plus 24 times sine of x. At this point, you should remember to add in the arbitrary constant, which was ignored up here. But like I said, each of these would have an arbitrary constant, and they'd all just get grouped together in one single term and end up as one single arbitrary constant. Um, this can be simplified a little bit. So let's actually group all of the terms with sine together and all of the terms with cos together. And then we can pull out actually the sine x from each term with a sine and a cos x with each term with a cos. And then we can simplify this step one further by pulling a 4x out of this thing that follows the cos x, so we could have this times 4x times um, just x squared minus 6 plus c. And that should be in a reduced enough form to satisfy your professor or whoever is trying to ask you this question. So yeah, hopefully that example was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video where we'll go over another example using integration by parts the fast way.